Let's price a call option and a put option using the binomial option pricing model. And the binomial option pricing model is one of the two most popular option pricing models up there with the Black Scholes Merton model, which you may have heard of. In this example, we're going to keep it simple and assume that our options just have a one year time period. And so we're going to start at t equals zero, which is just today and make the assumption that our stocks price today S equals zero is equal to $40. So let's just write that. And then this binomial option pricing model makes the assumption that at any given node, which this is an example of a node, the stock has two possible movements that it can make. One is up and one is down. And those there's only one possible up price and there's only one possible down price so that price in the up rate scenario we've denoted as s uh, one plus that is going to be equal to s zero times u so the stock price today multiplied by the up factor so that's going to be equal to 40 times and the up factor we're just taking it as a given of 1.2 and if you're learning this option pricing model for an exam they'll probably give you the up factor and also D, the down factor in the question. If you're pricing using this model to price options in real life, you'd have to derive this yourself, both of them, based on the volatility of the stock, but that's sort of outside of the scope of this video. So let's, uh, let's price S plus one, which is gonna be equal to 40 times 1.2, which is gonna be equal to $48. And now let's price S one minus, which is the price of the stock in the down rate scenario or the down scenario, I should say, which is equal to um, SO times D, which is going to be equal to 40 times 0.75, which we have right here. And that's going to just be equal to $30. Now, given these two possible prices that the underlying stock can take, how would we price a call option, for example, using this model? Well, the key here is that we can price the call option by creating a riskless portfolio. Now, what do I mean by a riskless portfolio? A riskless portfolio would be one where we can hedge owning the underlying stock long and a short position in writing an underlying call and make it so that whether the stock price goes up or whether the stock price goes down, it does not matter to us. We will have the exact same value at the end. Okay, and how do we measure value? Well, value is going to be equal to this symbol value one plus in this up move scenario. And that's going to be equal to the amount of long shares that we have purchased, which is H multiplied by the price in the up rate scenario, which we know from this formula up here is equal to $48 minus whatever is the value of the call at payoff because we sold that call option so we will owe this value to someone else and so like i said we need to make sure that this value here is equal to the value in the down rates uh the down move scenario because that will mean that our portfolio is riskless we we don't care which way the stock's price moves and so the value in the down rate scenario will also be equal to this h here so the number of shares of stock that we bought long multiplied by the price of the shares in the down move scenario which we found to be thirty dollars subtracted by how much we owe the person for the value of the call that we had written so now we've got our formula for the value in the up move scenario and the value in the down move scenario. And then the only thing we do not know still in either of these cases is H. And so we can actually solve for the number of shares that we need to purchase in the underlying to make the riskless portfolio if we solve for H. And let me walk you through that, right? So we're using this formula. We don't know H. We do know the stock price and we can compute the value of the call option in this scenario. It's just gonna be equal to this stock price of 48 minus the exercise price of 38, which will be $10. And why is that? It's because if I own the call option, I can sell some, or I can buy something and pay $38, but it's actually 40, so I'm up 10 bucks on that. 
Then in the value in the down move scenario, we're still solving for H. We do know the stock price is 30. This time the call option price is actually going to be worth zero because the call is out of the money because the stock price is less than the exercise price and nobody would exercise a call in that scenario. So right, we know that these two must equal one another for our portfolio's value to be riskless. Now we can just plug the values into either side. So for V plus one, that can actually be substituted with H times 48 uh, minus 10. And then for V minus one can actually be substituted for just H times 30. And now we're just gonna do some simple algebra to find out what H is. So we can divide everything by H. And then you're going to see these H's cancel with one another. These H's cancel with one another. And once we cancel those out, we're left with 48 minus 10 divided by H is equal to 30. And then we can subtract um, 48 from both sides, which gives us negative 10 divided by H is equal to um, negative 18. And then we can multiply both sides by H and then divide by a negative 18, and we will end up with h is equal to uh, 10 over 18. So basically what this is telling us is that in our riskless portfolio, we would have purchased 10 eighteenths of one share and sold short one single call option. And when we pair those two positions together, we end up with a portfolio that is equal in value no matter what happens over the course of the next year. So now that we know how many shares of the underlying stock that we own, and we know we're short one call, we can actually find out what will be the value of our position one year from today. And we can do that using either of these formulas, V uh, plus one or V minus one, because we know they both come out to be the exact same value. So let's just go ahead and start plugging in for V minus one. So let's do this equals H, which is uh, 10 over 18, multiplied by the stock price in this down move scenario, which is 30. And we know the call option is zero, so we can just close that off right there. And that gives us a value of 16.67. So in either the up move or the down move scenario, we know we're gonna have a total portfolio value of $16.67 one year from today. But that is one year from today. So we need to find out what is the value of our portfolio today. And we can do that by discounting this value one year from today by the risk-free rate of 5%. And so to discount it back, that's quite simple. The present value is just gonna be that value one year from today of 16.67 divided by one plus the interest rate of 5%, 1.05, which gives us a present value of 15.5. Eight, seven. So we know that at time zero, we must have a total of $15.87 invested into this. We also know that at time zero, we must have purchased 10 eighteenths of a stock. So how much did we purchase of this stock? How much money, how much value in the stock did we have at time zero? Well, that'll be equal to the stock price at time zero, 40 multiplied by how many shares we had, which was just 10 divided by 18. So we found out here that we actually own $22.22 .22 worth of this stock at time zero. But we know that the present value of our total portfolio is $15.87. So the difference in value has to be the price of the call option. So the call option at time zero, its fair value is just going to be equal to 22 dollars and 22 cents minus 15.87 which gives us a fair value of a call option of six dollars and 35 cents so i just showed you the hard way to value a call option using the binomial option pricing model but now you will understand the logic of how this model works better now that you've seen that let's go over to the shortcut easy way where if you know the formula you can just solve it really quickly so there's two formulas that you're going to have to keep in mind. So this is the formula of how to price a call option uh, with this model. And so what you'll see is that the value of call option at time zero is equal to this is the probability that the up move scenario will occur. 
right? So that is this probability here. And then multiplied by the value of the call option if that scenario occurs, plus one minus the probability of that up move occurring, which is just the probability that the down move occurs, right? So one minus this is the probability that this occurs. If you add these two expressions together, they will sum to one. So it's that multiplied by the value of the call option in that down move scenario. So you're just taking the probability of either of the events occurring and then finding the value of what the value is when that event occurs and then dividing the entire thing by one plus R to get it back to the present value today, right? So we're gonna find out what happens in either scenario and then what is the value of if we discount it back. And then in order to find out these probabilities, which people call these quasi probabilities for this model or synthetic probabilities, not real world probabilities, you can use this simple formula here where the probability of the up move occurring is just equal to one plus the risk-free rate minus the down factor divided by the up factor minus the down factor. And we can just go ahead and do this really quick. So it's equal to one plus 0 0.05 minus 0 0.75 divided by uh, 1.2 minus 0.75, which gives us a probability of 0.667. So it's basically a 67% chance that the rates go up and a 33% chance that the rates go down essentially. So now let's value the call option using these probabilities. So this will be quite easy. It's just gonna be 0.667 multiplied by that $10, which we found out earlier, plus um, point, I guess it would be 333 repeated times uh, zero because the value of the call option in this scenario is it's not in the money, so it's worth nothing. And then we divide that whole thing by one plus R, which is just 1.05. And guess what we end up getting? It is 6.35, which matches the value of the call option that we had found when we did this calculation in the convoluted way earlier in the video. Now we can value the put option the exact same way for the most part. So we need to find the value of the put option in this up move scenario which is just going to be equal to the max of either zero or the strike price minus the uh, underlying stock price at that time, which is just the reverse of what we had measured with the call option. So the value is gonna be equal to max of zero or 38 minus 48, which is negative 10. And so the max is actually zero. So this put is worthless because it's out of the money in this up move scenario. Whereas in the down move scenario, the value of the put is equal to the max of zero or the strike minus the stock price, which is going to be equal to 38 minus 30, which is eight. So in the down move scenario, the puts in the money, it's worth $8. So now to value the put at time zero, we just take the probability of the up move occurring, the value of the put when the up move occurs, plus the probability of the down move occurring, times the value of the put when the down move occurs, and then we discount it back to the value of today by discounting at the risk-free rate for one year. And we can just solve for the value of the put like this. So let's do 0. Uh, 0.667 times zero plus uh, 0. 0.333 times $8 and discount everything back to today by 1.05. And we find that the value of this put is equal to $2.54. Now, I'd just like to make one concluding remark about this model. So in this video, we kept it simple, saying that the price is this value today. It can be there be this value that's an up scenario a year from today or a down scenario a year from today. And there's only two options. That's obviously ridiculous, and that would never occur in real life, that there's only two possible outcomes a year from now. So how this model is actually used in reality would be to make the time periods smaller and smaller and smaller. So instead of saying these this options price has two possible outcomes a year from today, we could say that this uh, possible options value has two possible prices uh, a second from now. And then the next second after that, it branches off. So it'd be like, okay, here's the stock's price. One second, it could be this one, or it could be this one. 
and then two seconds later it could be this one or this one or if it had gone down in the first case it could be this one or this one and then this will just keep growing and growing and growing and so this actually becomes extremely computationally intensive to create models with uh, smaller and smaller time periods but the accuracy should increase as you decrease the value of the time periods. And when people are actually pricing models in real life, they'll use extremely small time periods with extremely powerful computers. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more content just like this.